Good evening, Joel. Good evening. And welcome to Anderson Chapel today for our fall revival, as we shall kick off our fall revival tonight. Uh, we're delighted to have each of you with us tonight. We're looking forward to a wonderful service for these three nights uh, with our guest evangelist, the Reverend Dr. Timothy Walker. We, uh, our, it's our intent to start each night at 7 p.m. And uh, the program is outlined, and we thank God for each of uh, you. We are uh, attempting to stream a free conference call and YouTube live for those that may be listed by the airwaves. We're going to start with our open this up with our devotion, and Deacon J. May shall lead us in devotion. Please let us join in. I know some of you may not be able to lead a song, may not have a special testimony, but join in with the songs and the praises. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Zulu, for the revival. I just thank the Lord for my being here today and for you, you, and you. Now, revival, we need you to stay right. Revival not, not just a rebel service. We come to be revived. And, and revival is sometimes that, that uh, we have throughout the year of the Okay, St. Luke, the 13th chapter, began at that 10th verse. Now, I, I know what this verse is saying, but I, I want you to listen to it very closely as I read these, uh, these three verses to you. And it so says, He was teaching in one of the cities uh, on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bound together and could in no way lift herself. Now we think about something you lived to it for about two years now, that cold valley had, had a lot of bound, had, it had, had restricted up and done a lot of things. The, uh, and we couldn't even leave the house at times. Listen, listen to what the verse said. I know the verse not talking about COVID, but I want to listen to the spirit. I want to bring the spirit in that day. We may have a good time. So it, 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 it says she would have this affirmative for 18 years. She couldn't even live her own self. And a lot of us have been at home. Uh, 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 some had been sick and come go out and couldn't even visit our relatives. So we understand we come to be lifted up tonight, okay? Then go on and say that, and when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thy infirmity. Listen, I told some people a couple weeks ago they were worried about uh, had they been living. I said, You already been delivered. The problem is you just got let go, let loose. Let me tell you some members. I know they come back, the coronavirus had us down, but you know what? God already delivered us. He, all we got to do is just let loose and have faith in the work that had already gone on. I, I want to get you to get started. You just have faith. We already been delivered. Many times people walk around. I, I, now I did walk, uh, I don't know how to pay my bill. I've been sick for so long. Lift your head up. You already been delivered. And you put in God's hand, have the faith. Amen. Amen. And he said unto, and he and he laid his hand on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Of all of what we have been through, sickness, death, uh, uh, whatever, some of, some of our jobs got new job, but listen, God has brought him. Look, we are here tonight, so we can give God a glory for what he did, because we are here. Amen. Amen. And, 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 here, here, here you go and those that online, you know, I want to say this, with God of what you done, and you know, I, I know sometimes free come call, these things are very good, but just for a minute, turn your TV off. Turn your cell phone off. The one that you ain't using, the one that won't rank. And focus on what the, the verse is saying, but you are loose now. You have been set free. Satan has fooled a lot of people saying that uh, uh, you go anywhere other than the church, you're going to get sick. <laughs> you can get sick anywhere. 
You can get the Bible anywhere. I can get it anywhere. But we, you have been shot free. You're loose. They didn't come up with these shots and stuff on their own. God was in the midst of it. He laid a hand on their woman. He laid a hand on the society that he adopted. That he had loosened us. So we owe him a prayer. Okay, let me finish you. And the rule of the city of God answered. And then, and then this we call that Jesus had healed on the seventh day. You know, a lot of people got mad with a lot of people because they went back to church. Y'all y'all went back to the soon. Y'all should have wait. I'm just saying what that I know. And it did rule the same way. And he said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work, then therefore come and be healed, not on the and and not on the seventh day. And the Lord answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, do not each one of you on the seventh loose his eye out of his eye and find star and shall lead him away to to war. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, Satan had bound lo thee eighteen years to be loose from this bond on the seventh day. Satan fooled a lot of the church folk. Hey, got them bound about coming back to the house. Well, I might well say it like it is. Uh, 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 and not like I'm getting a paycheck for saying this. I'm saying like this. But Satan has fooled a lot of church folks saying, you can't come back to church. Mm-hmm. You know it like I do. I, I, didn't read, I, know, I know the Bible don't say it come around five days. The street don't say it. But I'm saying, what I, I'm saying what I see in the verse of what's going on today because we come to be revived. Amen. 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 And, and the only way we, we got to have some faith, where is our faith? Listen, so he said, they said, that, which one of you? Which one of you is your op or in the ditch? Uh, uh, didn't get on the seventh lead into war. Watch this church, folks. Which one of you got hungry, then go to pick a wig and buy you something to eat? <laughs> Help me, somebody. <laughs> which one of you got the neat gas in your car and your gas leave on empty and, and they put the little glove there? I know they have a sheet you put on glove and still put gas in your car. Y'all see what I'm saying? I am saying. This is wrong. That's why I tell you, sometimes I've been talking to you, and the day you did come, no, this is free. <laughs> I want you to feel the spirit that we, we come to be revived. You come yeah. to be lifted up. Yeah. We got to stop letting Satan fool us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm talking about y'all. I, maybe, maybe I'm talking about J.D. Yeah. The same God that protect me sitting in my office for January to May, the 10th or 15th, how long I worked this year, is the same God that protected me here in the church. And guess what, somebody? I didn't have to go up there. I was there because I wanted to be there. I was there because I was making money too now. I could do it with five, but I was there because I wanted to be there. You are here tonight because you want to be here. You're here tonight because you want to be revived. We got to stop saying that uh, we all are product that God is still working on. I'm an unfinished product. I don't expect to be completely finished until I go home. But you know what? I'm working on my temples now. Right. Every day. Amen. This woman, for 18 years, Satan had her mind. Jesus laid hand on someone to complain because she was evil on the Sabbath day. Someone complained to them because they're going to church. They stand too long. Why they give me revival for? Because God loves us. Yes. I, I know that yeah, y'all may be winning the word. He got finished. I'm finished when Jesus been with <laughs> And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all these glorious things that were done in him. So I came here this week and asked for 10 reasons for being here. 10 reasons. For being here tonight. One, God woke me up this morning. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. That, that, that yeah. reason number one. Amen. That reason I'm praising here right now because God woke me up this morning. Number two, God woke me up this morning. 
Okay, somebody getting it now. Have I heard an answer? Yes, somebody. somebody getting it. Okay. Number three, God woke me up this morning. And that, 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 that he's still free. Number four, because God woke me up this morning. And had my health and strength. And you go on to 10, you go to 100, you want to. But watch this. I want to do this. This is the stretch to start this thing up. Dr. Knight, you said I do the call anybody I want to call, right? Right now, I want you to offer a prayer that Satan, that for those that on Conquer Call, those by YouTube, whatever it is, those that hit, do a prayer for listeners and love free. That we might rejoice and give God the glory, give God the praise of this week. Stand before your presence on this evening just to tell you thank you, God. Thank you, God, for allowing us to gather here in this venue, God, to gather here in this place to worship you in spirit and in truth, to honor you, God, for just being God. Not because you've done anything for us, but for just being God, because that's enough, God. Because without you, we can do nothing. God, we stand before you today. We've been in the, the vineyard. We've been out laboring, God. And we've come tonight, God, looking for to be revived. Looking, God, for rejuvenation. Looking, God, for restoration. Looking, God, to be built up where we've been torn down. Or, or God, to be propped up on every leaning side. And God, we just... Thank you that it is you, God, who we know that we can depend on, who, who will just help us to, to, to be strengthened, help us to continue to run on, to see what the end is going to be, God. We just help you. Thank you, God, that you look upon us, God, and you see our needs more than you see our faults, God. You don't always point at our mistakes, God, but God, you tell us that I believe you can be if you would just try, if you would trust me. And God, we thank you for that. For without you, God, we would be nothing. But God, this journey is getting tough as you can see, as you sit high and you look up. Yes. There are things happening in this world, God, that I don't understand. I, I know a lot of people don't understand. Oh, God, it's just like everybody's out for self, God. Nobody's caring for their neighbor. The love of many has waxed cold. You said in your word this was going to happen, God. But, God, I thought you meant the world. I didn't know you meant it was going to happen in the church. Yes, so, yes. God, I, I, I just tell you things are happening. And, and we've got to open our eyes and we've got to see God. But, God, as we open our eyes and as you reveal to us those things, that we're going to have to face in the days to come, God. We ask you, God, to just help us, God. Help us to know the way, God. Help us to follow you and to trust you. God, give us leaders who will lead us, God, in the direction that you would have us to go, God. Don't let us be like wayward sheep, home here and grow, God. Oh, God, give us someone who will show us the way. Oh, God, who will point in the direction that we should go. And, oh, God, and when we get there, they'll show us what we need to do, how we need to be, God, how we need to live to be approved of as your children. Because, God, what we desire is a home in your heaven. Yes. What every day will be Sunday, a Sabbath will have no end. Yes. But, God, we just pray. We just pray that you. That you look upon us, God, and those things that we don't ask for, God, you know what we are in need of. So, God, we pray that you will grant it to us if it's your will. Oh, God, uh, uh, things that we fail to do, God, touch us in a way that will help us to understand that we're not on the right track. We're not moving as you desire us to move, God. But you're touching us to show us that it's time to move and be about our Father's business. Oh, God, help us. Help us to always be what you have called us to be, your children and your people, loving one another. Because by this shall men know that we are your disciples, that we have love one for another. So, God, we put everything in your hands. We trust, God, that you are able to do everything but fail. This is thy servant's prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Knight. Thank you.
But uh, I, I'm going to tell you something now. I know, without a shadow of doubt, I'm not the only one that did this. I already know that. Yeah, but I, I, if I can give you my little third in the last two years, I think now I might, I might miss some. Why, why I need strengthening. Why my faith need to be stronger. And, and, and the bell that I have been through, been sick in the last two years. Had two aunt to pass. I don't know how many cousins back. Simple in the car. Had a niece to pay. And had my dear wife to pay. But you know what? God has still strengthened me. And I'm still holding on. Because not only did I pray for myself, but I know other people have been praying for me. And so I give God the praise, give him all the glory for. And I know without a shadow of doubt that I'm not the only one that God has been blessing. Because sometimes I get to talk about the Lord. I can talk now. And I really believe in them in the spirit. I can get to talk. I can tell you some good news. And all the bad things that we've been going through. Because the good news is all what I have been through, God was still there with me. That's the good news. When I couldn't even see my way, God still liked the way he me. When I thought I was all alone by myself, I found out that little he was there. He was there. And, 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 and sometimes I, I thought I just couldn't see my way. I just, when I got, you know, the first thing when, when I got sick that time and the kidney stone was bought, I could turn to my wife and she would tell me, say, honey, you're going to be all right, my boo. But that time, at 2 o'clock in the morning, she wasn't there, Dr. Knight, but Jesus was there. Yeah. He touched me. Somebody said, how in the world did you do that all those stones by yourself? I won't by myself. Lord with me. And so I'm saying to you, if you have a son, and I, I, I don't know, did it tell me how long before you got life? And if I could, if I, if I could say, I had a whole lot of songs I was saying I could sing by myself, but if you that can't say, somebody give me a son, let the spirit come in here like a river, since the conqueror has come, he abides with us forever, makes the trust.
and he has blessed me with a reasonable portion of health and strength, so that I'm able to stand on my own limbs, I'm able to wave my hand, I'm able to use my tongue to say amen, I'm able to see with my eyes tonight, and God is blessing right now. He has blessed Anderson Shout. Yes. Two long years. Yes. Not being in revival in the house. Yes. But we he has allowed yes. us to come yes. back this yes. time. And somebody will yes. say, Lord, I thank you. Yes. It's revival time. Yes. If ever we need to be revived, yes. we need a revival now. Yes. And I know that we have those that are in the house, those that are uh listening to the streaming services, however you are here tonight, but we thank God for you today. Amen. And we thank God for this wonderful choir, this group tonight, congregation and friends of God that has come to share with us the music tonight. We thank God for the man of the hour that shall bring us the word tonight. We thank God for each of you for your amens and you're just joining in with the choir. We have come to lift up the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's revival, but it's also worship. And we pray tonight that the something through a song, through a prayer, through the scripture, through the preached word, that someone will say, Lord, what more might I do? Lord, let me to rededicate myself to your service. For we are straight away. And it's time to come back to God. Amen. Amen. I know a lot of times we think that revival is designed to, to bring new members into the churches, to reach the lost. Yes, the word of God is going to reach the lost. But we have revival because we need to rededicate ourselves. We need to focus ourselves. You know, every Sunday is really a revival. Amen. But sometimes we have to have that special coming together, that special gathering. Sometimes that special family reunion. But we come tonight to lift up the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Exactly. And we are delighted. Uh, we are going to ask that you will rise to your feet. For this is the day which the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And this choir is going to give us their opening selection. Amen. Amen.
welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. Amen.
it again. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. My request tonight is that you would magnify the Lord with me. Yes. Let all of us exalt his great name together. Amen. Our God is great. And he is greatly to be praised. We honor the Spirit of Christ tonight for giving us this opportunity to worship together. We thank him for extending the lease on our lives and giving us a little more time. And we are glad that he's afforded us the privilege to meet collectively again for revival. Amen. Amen. It's just a blessing to, to be in the number one more time. Amen. So we give honor to the Spirit of Christ. We thank Him for all of His bountiful uh, acts of kindness towards us. We give honor to Pastor Malcolm Lewis. Amen. Your pastor. Come on, let's thank God for the pastor. Amen. Amen. Stand now, amen. I look back at that choir and see and hear those voices blending in such a marvelous way. And I thank God for them, the congregation and friends of God. Thank God, thank God for them, amen. And for all of the ministers of the gospel, thank God for those kind words of introduction, amen. I wish my mother was here to hear that. Kind, kind words of introduction. Praise God. I solicit your prayers as we look into God's word uh, tonight. If you have your Bibles, if you take them and turn to Psalms 100. Amen. Amen. Psalms 100, a very familiar Psalms. Most of us, we know it by head. Amen. Amen. We knew it by heart and we changed the way we Live. Oh. <laughs> Amen. 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 Psalms 100, if you go to it is, if you would, uh, just let us, if you're physically able to stand and reverence of God's word. In the King James rendering of the Psalms, you will find, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Amen. Is that in substance what you find in your Bible? Yes. Amen. Amen. I want to preach tonight from the subject glad to be in the service. Amen. One more time. Amen. 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 You are glad. Could you repeat after me? I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. One more time. Lord, thank you for this word. And we pray that this word will live fresh before us. Use this broken vessel to declare the divine word. Lord, you get all of the honor, all of the praise anoint to the ears and hearts of this waiting congregation and you be glorified. Revive our spirits, revive our hearts, Lord, revive us again. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm glad to be in the service one more, one more time. Uh, David, my brothers and sisters, 
pens this psalm of praise, and it is a cause, a call rather, to praise the Lord. Even though David had a time in his life where he was excommunicated from the power of God because of his personal choices, his self-inflicted sins, still recognize that to be in God's presence and to allow God to envelop him once again was a good cause to praise the Lord. If we are breathing tonight, you know, my brothers and sisters, we owe God something. Amen. For the Bible declares that everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. And when we consider praise and when we consider the fact that God, as again Pastor Lewis alluded to the fact that after two and a half years, he's allowed us to come back together as a church body. He's allowed us to come back into the edifice. However, God during that two and a half year span, uh, made us to lie down, made us to take self-evaluation when it comes to worship. Mm -hmm. Because the truth of the matter is we have and had brought so many things under the umbrella of worship that was not authentic worship. Amen. And many of the things that we embraced were tradition, the way we think things should go, things that made us feel good, and many of the things that we embraced as a church, under the umbrella of the church, you can't find nowhere in the Bible. Amen. But I thank God that God has given us opportunity after that two and a half year hiatus to look at worship and see what true and authentic worship really is. Mm -hmm. Amen. When the word says that our master is coming back for a church, we cannot think that he's coming back for a building. We cannot think that he's coming back for a church name. Well, I know your mom and your daddy bought pews and windows, and they say they are charter members of a edifice, but our God is not coming back for that. The church dwells within our hearts. For those of you that are Bible readers, you remember when Jesus had an encounter with this woman at the well, and she began to talk about where her father's worship. Uh -huh. She began to talk about a mountain and a place and a well, and Jesus let her give her disclosure of what worship was, and then he started speaking. All right. And whenever the master speaks, we need to incline our ears <laughs> to hear what he has to say. Yeah. And he says, the day will come and is when they that worship me must, is imperative, worship me in spirit and in truth. God has given us time, my brothers and sisters, to get our house in order. God has given us time to stop peeking out of the window and start looking in the mirror and cry, as the songwriter said, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And so tonight, on this first night of revival, I want to declare, and hopefully I will have company, and that is that I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Yeah. Things may not be like they used to be. Uh -huh. Amen. But one thing the pandemic did, 
it allowed some folk that were trying to excommunicate themselves from the church anyhow to have an excuse. Amen. But I thank God. I thank God he's giving us the privilege, the honor, and the opportunity to come and be a part of the service. And I'm not just talking about being in a building. Because one thing that we must understand in this hour is that the church must expand beyond these four walls. We have technology, we have tools and platforms that we can use for a positive purpose. Yeah. Oh, we use them in our Amen. I know there's some Facebook followers and some Instagrammers in the house, and I know there's somebody that's on the telephone all the time. <laughs> Amen. But when you get on it, you ought to talk about what you know about. That's right. That's right. Amen. And stop just spewing out misinformation. Amen. And if God has done anything for you, if you are redeemed of the Lord, there ought to be some sign. Amen. So I'm glad tonight, beloved, to be in the service one more time. As I read this 100 Psalms, the, the, the psalmist shares with us uh, what we ought to embrace when we come in God's house. What we ought to embrace when we pick up God's word. What we ought to embrace when we call upon God's name. He says in verse 1, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Everybody can't sing like these young people behind me. Amen. Everybody does not have the gift of making a melodic sound, a, a sound of melody. Everybody does not have that gift, but God tells us to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And everybody ought to be able to make a noise. Oh, oh, oh yes, I remember when serving as minister of music at Ebenezer Church, there were times uh, when we practice and practice and things just did not seem to click. But when we got up on Sunday morning after much prayer, after much fasting, asking God to take full control, amen, something happened in the worship. Right. Somehow God got in what we were doing and he, he enveloped us with his anointing. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And it was a high time in the service. Now, when I went back and listened to the tape, I recognized we really won't do it all that. <laughs> <laughs> but there's something about it when God right. is in control. Yeah. One of the problems that we have is when we have gifts, we think things won't work if we don't use our gifts. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, I share with the churches that I'm serving. Listen, don't you get all excited about a gift, amen, or giftedness. You need to understand that God is the giver of all gifts. And we need to learn how to celebrate the giver over and against being over excited about the gift. Thank God for the gift, but we need to give credit to the giver. Yeah, right, yeah. Amen. I told them that somebody can come off the street and stand behind this sacred desk and know more Bible than your preacher. That's what I tell my congregation. Amen. Somebody can come off the street and, and open up their mouths and have, have melody in their throat. A bird can come in. That's right. Amen. And do what we think we are doing. Uh, but the Bible said, make a joy for noise right. unto the Lord. Right. Amen. Look at what it says. It said, make a joyful noise. Joy. And whenever we worship God, we ought to worship him joyfully. Right. I know you don't have them in Anderson Chapel. And I know that the congregation and the choir behind me does not have this in the churches that you are affiliated with. But there are some folk. When they come and use what God has given them, they don't do it joyfully. Right. They act as if it's a burden. <clears throat> they act as if they've been forced to do it. Always talking about how full my plate is. You ought to thank God you got a plate. <laughs> Worship him. Amen. Joyfully. 
Amen. I wish I could say it like I feel it. Amen. Oh, Lord, yeah. Lord's been yeah. preaching, uh, amen, last couple of weeks. But worship him joyfully. Yeah. Amen. Even though I can't say it like I feel it, I'm glad I can say something. Oh, amen. Right. Yeah. I'm glad to be in the number one more time. That's what I said earlier. It could have been the other way. Right. Amen. While I was coming and that I was driving, uh, well, I was driving and she and I came, uh, were in the car and I was trying to listen to a scripture because my grandson was keeping a lot of noise and I made the, the, uh, the accident of picking up my cell phone on 43 while driving. Mm -hmm. And when I picked up my cell phone to look at the scripture, amen, I swerved into the other lane. Oh. Amen. Almost hit a car. And they said, give me that phone. Amen. <laughs> it could have been the other way. Amen. We're not here because we're so grand and so good. We're here because God has looked beyond our faults. God has seen our need, and for that, we ought to be joyful. Right. Amen. We ought to be joyful. We ought to be joyful. And then the word says, serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Amen. Serve the Lord with gladness. The truth of the matter is when it comes to worship and it comes to church, we have more fans and followers than disciples. Uh -huh. I need to say it again. Okay. Right. We have more fans and followers than we do disciples. Oh, Lord. Amen. Amen. Disciples. Disciples are learners mm -hmm. of the Lord. And they desire to impl implement <coughs> what they learn. Right. Yeah. Fans and followers, they run to the nearest fan. They are excited about what's, what's new. And there's nothing wrong if you are indeed sowing and growing. If you are indeed learning and yearning for God's word. But in so many of our church, churches, we have fans and followers. If things don't go the way we think they should go. Amen. Amen. We're subject to... To throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. That's right. I mean, I remember coming up and my dad would send me to Carolina basketball camp every year. And I would come back, amen, with my blue and white basketball, my light blue shorts, white shirt. Mm -hmm. After one full week of uh, Roy Williams, who was the assistant coach back then, uh, teaching, Dean Smith teaching, I would come back thinking I was somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and I went back to Thornstown my light blue and white ball and my cousins, Mark and Bill and uh, the Anderson boys, amen, they knew I'd been going all week to camp and when it came to pick the team amen, I just knew Pastor Lewis, I knew they would pick me first <laughs> I've been to camp all week amen, I've, 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 I've sharpened my skills and I've learned the jab step and I've been taught all week but what they would do is they'd pick everybody in the community <laughs> and, and overlook me. And so what I did, I said, well, y'all give me that blue and white ball. I'm going home. <laughs> Amen. We had a house that was right beside the basketball court. And I thought that just because I took my blue and white ball, that I was going to stop the game from going on. <laughs> For just a few minutes, amen, I, I heard the bouncing ball. I looked out the window, I saw dust going everywhere. We weren't playing on asphalt. Dust going everywhere. I heard the boys hollering, throw it here, throw it here. What am I saying? The game was still going on, even though I took my ball. I thought I was going to stop something, but listen, one monkey don't stop something. Right. <laughs> a whole lot of folk feel as if I take mine. Now, I've had folk in my 26 years of pastoring to say, I'm not going to give my time, my time and my talent to the church anymore because things are not going my way. Right. I know y'all not in here, but you know something. They get upset just because things are not going their way and they're not serving the Lord. 
Amen. But the psalmist says, if we are going to be glad to be in the member, not only must we worship him joyfully, but we ought to serve him glad. I thought I would have more of a witness there. I'm glad I, I'm glad I bought my own. Amen. In Luke chapter 10, for those the Bible readers, you remember when Martha was preparing for the master, she was working in the kitchen, but, but Mary was sitting at the feet of the master. And Martha got all upset. She was serving, but she won't do it again. She was serving, but she was had her eyes on her sister. And you'll be amazed at how many folk in the church cannot do their work for living at God has hit Jesus. Jesus said, the reason I endured all of the shame, the reason I was able to endure the cross is I knew the joy that was set before me. He didn't say what was going on around me. Here he is. He handpicked a Judas that he knew would betray him. He handpicked a Thomas that he knew would doubt him. But all of that did not stop him from pressing because the joy was set before him. That's right. There are too many in the church that look at everywhere else. Looking behind them, what happened 10 years ago? Come on. Come on. Amen. Instead of looking okay. unto Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thinking, I'm looking unto him. Why? He's the author and the finisher of my faith. And I'm going to serve him gladly. Yeah. Martha said, Jesus, why don't you tell my sister to come in here and help me? Well, Jesus said, listen, and Mary is, she is looking and depending and understanding what is true to her soul's salvation. Yeah. Yeah. She's chosen a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Glory, hallelujah. She's chosen a good thing. Why? Because I am the focus of her life. Yeah. 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 I don't care what we're doing in the church. If God is not the focus, you yeah. need to stop doing it. All right. yeah. All right. yeah. Yeah. Amen. Here we have on our marquees that we are missionary Baptists, that we are, are, are on one accord, and, and whosoever will, let them come. But you let somebody come here that does not smell like you smell, or is not from your house, and you start looking at them and wondering, who is this that's coming to our church? Well, you said on the marquee, whosoever will, let them come. If you don't believe it, you need to take it down. Serve him with gladness. Yes. Right. Amen. Right. Serve him with gladness. So we need to worship him joyfully. We yeah. need to serve him, yes, he gladly. And then the book says, verse 3, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. Yes. Right. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Amen. So if we're going to be glad to be in the service, we got to worship him joyfully. We got to serve him gladly, but we ought to love him intellectually. Mm. All right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We ought to love him intellectually because the Bible says, know ye. K-N-O-W. Mm. Amen. When I was in school, they said K-N-O-W is not like N-O. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. K-N-O-W means that there has to be some knowledge. K -N -O -W. Amen. Amen. Yeah. N-O means no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Amen. But he said, no, no ye. That means we ought to love him intellectually. Yeah. Right. What, what, should, what should we know about him? Know ye that the Lord, he is God. We ought to know his lordship. Amen. We ought to know his craftsmanship. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. That's his lordship. Yes. His craftsmanship is, is he that made us. Yes. Well, Amen. I don't need me to shock nobody on this Tuesday night, but you didn't make yourself. All right. All right. Yes. We are not our own. We've been bought with a price. Yes. And, and why is it then that every time trouble comes our way, we began to bitter, be bitter and complain to God, why me? We don't ask that when 
things are going well. We don't ask that when he looks beyond our faults when he should have wiped us out and annihilated us a long time ago. We don't ask him that. But whenever we come to a little trouble, we ask, why me? Listen, God made us for his good pleasure. He is the potter. We are the clay. Amen. And the potter does with the clay whatever he wants to do. Amen. That's why I thank God if he does not, not do another thing for me, I thank him he's already done. He's already looked beyond my fault. He's already forgiven me of my sins. He could have wiped me out a long time ago, but he has extended to me a little more time. He made, we ought to know his craftsmanship. Amen. That's, that's why we ought not to get all been out of shape when somebody else does not like us. Amen. Hmm. Amen. When somebody else sees things differently, when our, our good is evil spoken of. Listen, listen, God made us. It is not what folk think about us that matter. All right. All right now. It's how we deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, yeah. glory, hallelujah. Love him uh, intelligently. We ought to know his lordship, his craftsmanship. Amen. He made us with a heart a soul, and we ought to love him with our heart, our soul, our mind, and all of our strength. Yeah, yeah. We ought to grow in grace. We ought to ask God to let this mind be in us. That's all soul in Christ Jesus. Amen. So we ought to know his lordship. Amen. He is Lord. Yeah. Lord. Now, I don't mean to pass by that so fast, but if we would recognize that he is Lord, Amen. He knows everything. Yes. God is the only one that knows everything about us and still loves us. Yes. Yes. Thank you. you didn't hear what I said. Yes. I said he's the only one that knows everything. Your boo, your money, your friend, your cousin, they don't know everything. They know what you disclose to them. But God, they don't know what's in your mind, what runs through your mind. But God knows everything. And still loves us. Amen. We ought to know. We ought to know his lordship. We ought to know not only his lordship and his craftsmanship, but we ought to know that he is the owner of creation. Yeah. Yeah. Look at what it says. Amen. It is he that has made us. And not we ourselves. Look, we are his people. And the sheep of his pasture. Amen. He, he owns everything. Everything. Amen. And, 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 and we don't own nothing. <laughs> One of the problems in so many of our churches, especially in the rural area, we have a problem with ownership and stewardship. Right now. Amen. Right. Amen. Just because you got your hand on it, that does not mean you own it. Amen. Just because you sign the check, amen, that ain't your money. Amen. It all belongs to God. It all belongs to God. We are just stewards. That's right. That's right. Amen. Right. Now you might have the deed to it, but you don't own it. Right. I hear you. I hear you saying I got the title to it, but you don't own it. That's right. That's right. If you believe you own it, mess around and die. All right. All right. All right. Somebody be you got a favorite seat in your house, but guess what? Somebody else will be sitting. Somebody will be hugged up with your wife, hugged up with your husband. Amen. We are just stewards. Amen. Just passing through. Glory, hallelujah. This, 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 this barren land. Amen. I used to, I used to early on, and my pastor, and I'm almost finished. Amen. I used to, I, I used to say, Lord, if you could just, just take these cantankerous members out of the church. Mm. You're always complaining. Uh -huh. Always you say, you say stand up, they sit down. Say <laughs> so sit down, they jump up. <laughs> Amen. 
see the glass is half full. They say, no, it's half, half empty. <laughs> Amen. They always talk about, oh, the church, we going broke. We, we going broke. We ain't going to last. We, gonna, we broke. We broke. We broke. I tell the churches I'm serving, y'all got it all mixed up. The church supposed to be a non-profit entity. Everything we get in supposed to go out. I wish I had it. Everything that comes in supposed to go out. Amen. So God can let some more come in so it can go out again. God is not interested in a dead sea of selfishness. He's interested in a reservoir of giving. So we got to love them intelligently. We got to know that he is Lord. We got to know his craftsmanship. We got to know that he is the owner. He's the owner by creation. Well, amen. amen. He made us. Yes. Glory, yes. hallelujah. But not only did he made us, he's the owner by redemption. Yeah. Uh -huh. He bought us back. Yeah. Uh -huh. have a witness. Yeah. Because all of us, amen, I don't mean to shock you, were dead in sin. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. We were born in sin. Yeah. Yeah. Shaped in iniquity. Yeah. 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 Amen. We were knotted by nature. Yeah. But thanks be to God, not only did he create us, but he redeemed us. Yeah. Yeah. Glory, hallelujah. He, he redeemed. He redeemed us. He paid the price, a healthy price for us. So since he redeemed us, the redeemed of the Lord ought to say so. Yeah, yeah. And the Lord has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. We ought to say so. Yeah. Right. Then finally, my brothers and sisters, I'm glad, glad to be in the service. And I made up my mind, I'm going to worship him joyfully. Glad to be in the service because I I adore him. I, I thank God for the lyrical expressions of the artist formerly known as Prince. Uh, they talked about the door. He talked about until the end of time. I, I truly adore you. There's a line that I love. He says, if love, if the Lord one day struck me blind, your beauty I still see. Well, he was talking about something significant of but I adore the one that touched me this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because ain't nobody in here can, can tell me what time you went to sleep last night. Yeah. Amen. You can tell me what time you laid down. Yeah. But you don't know what time you went to sleep. Yeah. Because God had a way of slipping us, amen, from uh, being conscious to unconscious. Yeah. Yeah. And here we are lying in the posture of death, but right early this morning. Yeah. Oh. Amen. I don't know what finger he used, yeah. but God reached down and gave me one more day. So I've got to love him intelligently. I couldn't wake myself up. An alarm clock didn't wake me up. If your alarm clock woke you up, you ought to take it out to the graveyard. <laughs> Set it off right. and wait for somebody to get up. <laughs> now God reached way down, knowing everything about me. And I've got to love him intelligently. I know he's Lord. I know he's the craftsman. I know that he created me. And I know that he redeemed me. Yes. He bought me back. Yes. Right. Amen. I couldn't save myself. <laughs> Amen. No, he saved me. Yeah, yeah. Amen. He, he said he saved it. And it was risky business. Yes, he didn't wait until I got it, right? That's right. That's right. You know, there are a whole lot of folks saying, you understand? Uh, when I get myself together, I'll come to the church. Uh -huh. Amen. How many of you go in your bathroom and take a wash up before you get in the tub? <laughs> oh no. no. I'm going to get my stinking self right in the tub. <laughs> and, I, and that's what the Lord is saying. Come yes. just as you are. Come just as you are. I'll clean you up. I'll allow you to leave better than you came. Because not only am I your creator, I am your redeemer. And then here it is, my brothers and sisters. I'm glad because I made up my mind. I'm going to worship him joyfully. I'm glad because I made up my mind. I'm going to serve him glad. 
I don't have time peeking out of my uh, window and looking over and see what you're doing. Hmm. Amen. I don't cut my grass because my neighbor cut bad. I cut my grass because it needs cutting. Right. <laughs> Amen. And so when I work, I'm working as unto the Lord. Yeah. Because he knows everything. He sees everything. So I am serving him gladly. I'm loving him intelligently. Amen. Intelligently. Yeah. Amen. When I think of the goodness. Oh, yeah. uh, Jesus. Amen. Of the Lord. Yeah. And all oh, that yeah. he's done for me. Yeah. And my soul cries hallelujah. Yeah. And guess what? My soul doesn't have a mouth. Yeah. So when I start thinking with my mind. Amen. My mind says open your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. My mind says wave your hands. Yeah. Yeah. My mind says make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. But he is good. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. Why? For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. So then, as I bid you good evening tonight, I am glad, yes, on this Tuesday night. Amen. To be in the service one more time. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad to be in Anderson Chapel. Thank you. Amen. I don't have to be in a big cathedral uh, to praise the Lord. That's yeah. right, that's right. I don't have to have a Hammond organ playing in the background to praise God. That's right. All of that has its place. That's right. But oh, I thank God tonight we got the quota. That's right. As the Bible says, we're two or three. Yeah. Come together. In his name, he says, there I'll be in the midst. So I'm worshiping him joyfully. I'm serving him gladly. I'm loving him intellectually. But then I'm thanking him consistently. Because look at what the book says. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. And bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Amen. All generations. Yeah. I thank God my grandmama told me about praising the Lord. Yeah. She said, I'll trust in the Lord till I die. With that uh, alto voice, I hear her saying, get right with God. Yeah. Get right with God and do it now. But all that I learned as I heard her is I was serving the Lord vicariously. Or in other words, I was leaning on what she said. But how many know if you live long enough, if you trust them long enough, you'll know that God is good from generation to generation. God was good when we had beetles and didn't have a cell phone. God was good when we had a landline. God was good when we had to write a note. God is good now when we have Zoom and when we have cellular communication and, and iPhones. God is good from every generation to generation. And guess what? God is going to be good when we leave here. Somebody's going to sit in our seat if we learn how to sow seeds of the goodness of God and they'll thank him consistently. Yeah. I'm glad I don't have to wait till Sunday. God is good on Tuesday night. Yeah. I can praise him consistently because every day is a day of thanksgiving. Yeah. I'm going to stop because I'm glad <laughs> to be in the service yeah. one more time. Yeah. Come on, if you glad, give me a the doors of God's church remain open, the arms of Jesus stretched wide. Yes. Pastor alluded to an earlier revival is for the same to be replenished, renewed, refreshed. God can do it again. And I'm so glad to be in the service. Yes. He's still saving souls. Yes, he He's still forgiving sins. Yes. He's still lifting us up. Yes. And I'm glad to be in the service.
one more time. Amen. As this marvelous group of singers behind us lift the song, If There Is One, come while you have the time. Joining in with us, 
uh, continue to pray with us mightily as we continue with these three nights of revivals. And on tomorrow night, Dr. Walker will be back with us on tomorrow to share with us and just pray for him along the way. Amen. Encourage him and thank God for him and pray for him and his family. Pray for myself and my family likewise. Amen. Amen. Each night we begin at 7 p.m. and we respect the time of those who come to serve with us and we want to be we want to be on time for Amen. their time. Amen? Amen. 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 So if there's nothing else to uh, draw our attention at this point in time, you know, we used to say all hearts and minds are clear, but we pray all hearts and minds are not clear because we pray that the word is still <laughs> resonating with you this afternoon. Right. 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 Be clear, we want you to take something out. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. If there's nothing else, we're going to ask this wonderful choir to give us a closing selection tonight. Let us rise to our feet and thank God for the congregation and friends of God for coming Amen. and sharing with us. Amen. Amen. Let the church say. Amen. Amen.